Perfect. Well, again, thank you everyone for joining us this evening. My name is Owen Bly and I'm Senior Associate Dean of Admission here at Providence College. And we're pleased to be bringing you an introduction to the newest academic offering at Providence, our School of Nursing and Health Sciences. At the conclusion of my colleague's presentation, I'll share some information on ways that you can learn about the new school in person through visit opportunities we'll be offering this fall. But this webinar will certainly go a long way in helping you learn about the, the high quality and distinctive programs that we have developed. There will also be plenty of time for Q&A, so please feel free to ask any questions you may have using the Q&A widget on the bottom of your screen, and we'll answer all of those at the conclusion of the original presentation. Before we begin, one quick note of housekeeping about applying for admission to these great programs. You'll soon learn that the School of Nursing and Health Sciences contains majors, policy and management, health sciences, and nursing. The common application is now available for students wishing to apply for health sciences and health policy and management. As you'll learn in a moment and may have seen when you registered, because there's one more layer of the approval process for our nursing major, that option does not currently exist on the common app. We anticipate receiving that last approval in mid-September, and once it's granted, you'll be able to submit an application to the nursing program. If nursing's your interest, please hold off on applying for admission until that has happened. I'd now like to introduce Dr. Kyle McInnes, inaugural Dean of the School of Nursing and Health Sciences. Dr. McInnes joined Providence College in December 2021 as the college began exploring the prospect of expanding academic programs in the health sciences and nursing. Prior to joining PC, he served as provost at Johnson and Wales University, where he made a major impact on expanding the breadth of that institution's academic portfolio and established a research infrastructure leading to an influx of grants to support that research in the health sciences. He was also founding dean of the School of Health Sciences at Merrimack College and has a national reputation as a scholar and a researcher, having penned numerous industry textbooks. And I'm thrilled we have him with us here to usher in this new era at PC. Without further ado, Dr. McInnes. Thank you, Owen. Well, good evening, students, families, and friends. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we are going to uh, spend a little bit of time together. We're very, very excited on campus, uh, really throughout our, our alumni and uh, throughout the entire state. We've heard from so many people, uh, so happy that Providence College now has a school of nursing and health sciences. And tonight, we just wanna give you a flavor uh, for what the program consists of. And um, as Owen said, we'll have plenty of time for your uh, questions and uh, look forward to meeting you in, in person and giving you a tour of, of everything that's happening here. So thank you again for joining us. So this is truly a historic time at the college. If you are familiar with PC, um, know that we've got a long history, over a hundred years uh, as an academic uh, institution and uh, things have, have uh, really um, percolated in, in recent years. And this year, uh, tomorrow actually, we're um, welcoming the largest class in the history of the college. And uh, there's a tremendous amount of energy on campus. At this time last year, we were celebrating uh, another historic landmark 50 years ago was the first class of women at Providence College. So that was a, um, a year long celebration. So what I think is really unique for you is that you also get to um, explore being part of something very historic at the college. You uh, would be really the first class in a new school at the college. And that really only happens once is it can only be one first class, just like there was a first class of women that we just celebrated. You uh, in the fall of 2023 would be the first class to enter the new School of Nursing and, and Health Sciences. And so that's what we're sharing with you tonight. And I think what we're offering and what we hope will happen is that you'll see um, the great opportunities and excitement and you personally will become a history maker. You know, we'll look back at, at uh, this time in history and, and you would be part of uh, the first class uh, of this new school on campus. I always like to start with what's most important. And if you only remember a couple things uh, of tonight, I think this would be it really. Um, you know, why, why nursing and health sciences and what makes PC different? Why are we so excited about this? And how are we different from uh, 
some other programs that also either a Catholic school or non-Catholic school, public, private, that also offer these programs. Why is this at PC really unique and distinctive? And I, I would have you students think about just three things, honestly. Um, number one is this is really going to be an opportunity if you're someone who is driven by purpose and kind of mission oriented. Uh, we built this program uh, with very intentionally to align with PC's mission and our core values. And I'll explain what those are in just a minute. I think the second thing is it, there's a really unique opportunity to capitalize on the integration of a professional program like nursing or health sciences. And that includes health policy management, which you'll hear is part of the health sciences program. But to combine that with a liberal arts curriculum and a liberal arts education is a unique opportunity. Um, and in particular at Providence College, we're known nationally um, for our liberal arts education. And I've had an opportunity to hear from a lot of our alumni and our board of trustees who are our alum, and they really credit the liberal arts curriculum and the critical thinking skills and problem solving. And that experience that they got through a liberal arts curriculum has made a big difference in the success of their careers. So you get the professional school, but you also get not a, a trivial liberal arts, so I'm just going to take this course to get through it. The liberal arts part of the education will be a highlight uh, of the skills that you'll gain here at PC. The third one I'm super excited about, and that is um, this school in particular, the School of Nursing and Health Sciences is building its experience to have a global perspective. We're concerned not only about healthcare in Rhode Island and healthcare in New England, and in the United States, but across the globe. And so we want our, our students to have a global experience. And you're gonna be able to study in, in different countries. Um, you're gonna be able to do all sorts of um, study uh, programs that involve local as well as international. We'll touch on those in the next 20 minutes or so. So what do I mean by a distinctly PC experience? Uh, really just very quickly read to you this quote from the president of the college, um, Father Kenneth Sicard. And Father Sicard has summarized this um, initiative like this. Programs like nursing and the health sciences, which focus on the care of others, respect for the dignity of every person, and the importance and service to God, and neighbor, they flow naturally uh, and historically uh, in, for, in support of uh, the Catholic and Dominican mission of Providence College. So I actually went to a workshop this morning and we we're talking about the history of nursing and the history of uh, early medicine. And there's so much of it goes back to um, the Catholic and Dominican roots. And that is such a pride for us and that the integration of that experience and how we treat others, how we surround our students with community and support. It's so important when you're entering healthcare. I've been a healthcare um, professional for 30 years. My area is um, prevention and, um, and uh, wellness. And um, when you're studying uh, something as really rigorous as healthcare, having the support systems in place are really critical. And, and um, I think you're really gonna find that those support systems and what we've built in this new school and how it really um, symbolizes our uh, Catholic and Dominican mission and faith um, is really a, a highlight of, of what we're doing at PC. Um, this slide is just a little screenshot of our what our mission is, and you can, you can read this on the website. But again, it's um, we, we're building the program and the vision. What I want you to leave with is why is PC's program different? And it's really about the vision of the program founded in faith and reason, a focus on the care for others, and uh, built on our liberal arts, our academic excellence. Uh, obviously, we've got an international reputation of excellence in, in academics. And then finally, uh, our focus on healthcare for all. 
not just for some, but even those who can't afford it, who are um, disadvantaged, who uh, um, need uh, are in need perhaps of, of stronger healthcare than, than others. So this is about holistic approach and how you as students will make a difference in this world. And that's why I say this is ideal for students that have that calling, you know, uh, the see this as a vocation and a passion who really want to enter the field for those reasons. This is really how we've built this program. And this is our vision. A um, couple quick examples for you, because I really want to get to your questions and your comments. So a um, couple examples. I mentioned liberal arts a few times. So what does that mean? What will you experience? So here's three examples. Um, uh, some of the courses that you're going to take won't be in the school of nursing and health sciences. They'll be in the other schools. So uh, we have an incredible school of arts and sciences, for instance. And um, we have an amazing science faculty. And so you'll actually take chemistry, a, a special course of chemistry for the health professional. So it won't be general chem. We've created a chemistry that you need to know as a health professional, but still being taught by our um, renowned chemistry faculty. And that's just one example. There's others uh, related to faculty who are participating from the arts and sciences, psychology, for instance, another example. Um, in the humanities area, um, we've created special courses as part of the core curriculum. So in other words, these are classes that every student needs to take, even if you're in the business school or you know the school of professional studies. But the humanities course an elective that you might choose to take, meaning it's required, but you can you have options, might be something like medical humanities or bioethics, those types of things that look, I mean, you know, you want to study these things in the liberal arts, but you also maybe want to make the connection back to, you know, um, your interest in healthcare. And so we've really created a way for you to do that. The other thing. Uh, I think in the liberal arts that we've worked really hard about and that we're excited or hard for and, and excited about is that we've created opportunities for you to have minors, double majors, particularly in the health sciences and in health policy management. Um, minors are very achievable in nursing, a double major in nursing, a little bit more difficult because it, it's got a lot of required courses where health sciences has more electives. But for both nursing and health sciences, we have um, just created a draft of a Spanish minor. In particular, it will be called Spanish for the Health Professional or Health Professions. And uh, that is currently uh, in the final phase of development. It will be here the time uh, you get here, if you so choose. And so these are just some examples of many on how we integrate into an entire PC experience. Another example is look at um, one of our speak one of our panelists in just a few minutes um, has her doctorate and years of experience and is an, in a nationally known researcher in the history of medicine. So you actually get to understand different aspects, not just the technical piece uh, of what you're studying, but put it in the context of of history. Um, we're also very interested in how the arts play play into healthcare, um, and so looking at healthcare and the arts. Um, and we are going to be—you'll see in a minute—located on campus right near the Smith Center for the Arts. It'll be a wonderful collaboration opportunity between uh, between art and healthcare. The other example I want to give you is what I mentioned a couple minutes ago about a global health opportunity. So what does that mean for you as a student? So we're currently uh, working with our global studies program. Uh, we're looking at a global health program so that you can take some of your courses, a particular course in other places in the world. Um, so not just go and take electives there, but also get to see healthcare through an international lens or a global lens. So right now we're working on, uh, on a, I think it's six weeks, might be five week program in London uh, to study healthcare. There are others we're looking at in Sydney and many places 
Um, and one uh, again, our, our chair of health sciences will be able to speak more to this as she's been doing this for quite a while here at PC. So we are looking at um, opportunities. We have um, created uh, ways for uh, nursing students to have global health experiences and even get micro credentials like a certificate in global health. So that's in the works, we'll be ready uh, shortly. Immersive experiences, again, in the Spanish minor in healthcare. Um, some of the credits for the minor will actually be to um, work in a healthcare setting either locally or have an international experience like in the DR or Puerto Rico and other places, Costa Rica. Um, so all of that is in the works. All of it will, will be finalized in the months to come. There's also traditional study abroad. Um, again, a little more difficult for the nursing because of the prescriptive nature and, and doing clinicals and that sort of thing, but very much um, a part of a full semester abroad for the health sciences. What we have done to get around of the prescriptive part in nursing is we've created uh, or are creating short-term study away programs. So we call it Maymester, and you've heard that probably. And these are programs that start right at the end of the school year, but don't go the whole summer, don't uh, conflict with the fall. So they're short-term, like the one I mentioned, the London uh, healthcare um, Maymester experience that we're currently investigating and kind of setting up. So lots there, folks, um, lots for you to explore. And again, why have we created these type of opportunities? Because we we believe that, you know, in a in a global society, that a, a true um, healthcare professional, um, educated healthcare professional, has to have a global experience or has to really have a global perspective. And the best way to do that is to live it, <laughs> uh, to be able to experience the culture and have an immersive experience. So we're very very excited about that. Um, closer to home, uh, I'll do two slides here, one on nursing, one on health sciences. Uh, we have an enormous um, clinical network that uh, have confirmed uh, as clinical partners with us. And as you can imagine, a lot of it is local, like Women and Infants Hospital. Actually, one of our alum is the president of that hospital here in Providence and all through Rhode Island from, from here to Newport to really every, every area of Rhode Island. It's not a big state, but <laughs> all through the state, uh, we've got a really strong network of providers who uh, will create that opportunity to do the clinical uh, training. Um, but it doesn't stop there. We certainly are into Massachusetts. We have talked to Children's Hospital in Boston. That's one of, I actually spent 30 years in Boston training. Um, and uh, we have a lot of connections there. So we're building this network, starting locally, but expanding it. We have a tremendous alumni network in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, um, you know, the Atlantic seaboard. So we have um, commitments uh, from a number of hospitals in the New York area. So there's lots and lots of different ways for you to get clinical experience uh, in the nursing program. And we're very excited about that. On the health sciences side of the house, um, I, again, um, one of the programs, so there's two programs, is a health sciences major and a, a health policy manager. Well, health policy management has been doing this for decades um, and has enormous network um, of professional opportunities uh, for you to do. So exciting internships, it's built into the curriculum. It's um, it's a requirement actually. So we we think that, hands-on professional experience is so so important and so valuable. It's built into the curriculum. So you'll be able to do internships. You'll be able to work with faculty if you so choose uh, in mentored research. A lot of our students publish papers, present at conferences. It, it's really quite amazing for undergraduates. And then capstone experiences um, again, all of these things are tailored to the interest of the student. So we create the, think of this as a menu, kind of going to a restaurant. It's a menu of options for what you'll choose for dinner. And same thing with experiential learning. There'll be a menu of choices and you'll be able to pick those things that are a favorite to you. The other part, and I'll, I'll wind this down and, and just check my time here. Um, I think we're doing great, it looks like. Um, 
experiential based training will also occur on a daily basis. So the way we'll do that is we are creating a center for clinical education in the new school. And uh, everything that we do like anatomy training. So you'll take an anatomy and physiology course. It'll be a year long course, part one and part two. And uh, we have state of the art equipment. We actually just came from an architectural meeting today as we build out. Uh, we get to do this from scratch, which is really exciting. Uh, but we have every tool you can imagine. Some of you may have used tools like uh, augmented virtual reality, or maybe you've done gaming with virtual reality. We actually teach um, anatomy and physiology and pathophysiology using these same tools. So uh, this is, you can see a couple of the pictures here. That's a virtual dissection where your hand actually becomes a scalpel on an eight foot table. Basically it's an eight foot iPhone and there's real live cadavers that have been put, have um, been dissected layer by layer then put back together through CT scans. And so it's real person. There's actually four people in the technology and you, you can dissect and you can spin things around and you do all of that uh, virtually. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so all of this will be part of your education. Uh, I'm very much a person who learns by doing and experiencing, and, and I am a strong believer of that. And so as, uh, as I came here and as uh, was appointed as the kind of founding startup dean to get this going, uh, that, that's really been my approach is focus on hands-on learning, um, focus on technology, uh, because again, I think in your generation that uh, you're, this is second nature to you. Um, you'll probably know a lot more of how to use these machines than I do once you get your hand on them. Um, for the nursing side and for the health sciences side, but more on the nursing side, we also do something called simulation. And these are not ordinary mannequins. They're, they're mannequins that actually have a computer heart <laughs> and computer soul. And, uh, and uh, they can do everything from breathe to uh, have, a, have a heartbeat, to perspire, to salivate, and uh, all controlled by computers. So it's a really tremendous way to go and practice and you know make mistakes. That's how we learn. And uh, get all of this done in the lab before we get out to the real world. And there, hey, we'll still learn by making mistakes, but better off uh, to do it under controlled environment. So state of the art facilities, I think that's the take home is that uh, you'll get to experience this on a, on a regular basis. And we're even putting these things in our study rooms so that you have access kind of around the clock. Uh, so um, you can learn at your pace, you have full access uh, to be able to use the best equipment in the world to, to experience this. So last part, folks, again, thank you for your attention today and, and hopefully you're enjoying this, but uh, here's how the mechanics of the new, uh, the new school work. So you can see on the screen, uh, kind of a couple layers down, there's a, a department of nursing in the school and there's a department of health sciences. The nursing for right now has one program. And actually, as Owen said, that we expect to have the final approval of the program from the state. So it's been approved by the board of trustees, by the faculty, the president, et cetera. Now it just has an external board uh, for approval. And we, we've already had our site visit. Uh, we've had review of the whole proposal. We feel very strong, very confident, and very excited to work with our colleagues across the state uh, in the Board of Nursing. So expect to get that early, early to mid-September. You'll be the first to hear. We'll send you out that this is a go, and then you'll be able to go through the application process. The Department of Health Sciences um, already is approved 100%. There's no external approval needed. So it's on the Common App, as Owen said you are able to apply to the new program in health sciences and to the existing program in health policy management. And rather than explain the difference between them, I'll wait to our Q&A because we have the chair of the health sciences on the call and she'll come up and, and walk you through some of that. This is a little snapshot, but you we're building out our website. You'll get to see more of this, but it's a pretty cool curriculum. Um, very, um, in-depth. Um, 
And a lot of these courses are required. So, I mean, anatomy and physiology, whether it's here or at UCLA, you know, all nursing students are going to take that course. So we've done it in a way that we think will help distinguish ourselves. Um, and uh, you can go through and look at all the different courses. But what I think is, is really important, again, is that we're leveraging what PC already has. You know, we've got great um, chemistry program and um, psychology is one of our most popular programs. So we've integrated all of that into your experience, as well as the liberal arts that I've talked about previously. Um, and then so you can choose electives. Again, we've got a public health uh, kind of emphasis. You're able to, to do things like the minor in, in Spanish. But again, it's not just Spanish. Um, a lot of our students are, are doing minors and all sorts of things. Um, so that's uh, something that you could think about. This is health sciences and uh, including the two bachelor programs. Again, honestly, you can come in under either one. They're, they're so fluid. And I don't expect students coming out of high school to know exactly kind of programs that are fairly similar to know the difference and which one should I choose or feel any type of stress about that because if they're in the same school and we can we can move and be fluid across them. So I would explain that more. The health sciences is for kind of future allied health. And by allied health, I mean, well, you know, I'm interested in being a physician assistant. I'm interested in physical therapy or speech and language pathology or occupational therapy, kind of patient clinic, not, not necessarily medical school. I, I do think I was a biology major. I do think our bio, our tremendous biology program is really well established uh, in terms of their curriculum for pre-med, pre-veterinary. But allied health science is the kind of things that I'm talking about, even nutrition, exercise science, kinesiology, those types of things are really ideal in health sciences because you take all the prerequisites so you can go immediately to grad school. You've got everything done and you've got the experience and you're coming out of a place like PC. Health policy management is fantastic in the public health area and the wellness and health promotion and policies. And, um, you know, those types of majors, of which again, I will um, pause there because we have an expert that was gonna join us in about two minutes. And she can talk through that. This is a very prestigious program. This program is well known uh, in, in at PC because it's our students have done so well. So so that's it, folks. There's um, there's kind of three programs that we're offering in years to come, which is not far away. Um, we are going to build out our graduate program. So the time you graduate, there'll be a portfolio of graduate opportunities. Like so, four plus one, meaning undergraduate, direct pathway to graduate, those types of things. But for now, again, I always want to uh, have focus on you know <laughs> what's next for you, what do you got to be thinking about. So these are these are three pretty broad choices uh, that I think you could do really well. Um, I'll go quick here because again, we're going to talk about this in just a minute. But I think um, health sciences. So I'm actually a health scientist. Uh, my area is prevention. I trained, my first job was at Brigham and Women's Hospital. I trained at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, and then most recently at Children's Hospital. So I'm interested in healthcare from a, um, not treating patients, but preventing and um, preventing chronic diseases and wellness. So health sciences will, will really focus on that. We can explain that more and, and uh, give you more background on what that is. But I, we have a lot of students here who want to go on to graduate school in different areas, like the ones I mentioned, PA and so forth. This is really a fantastic, as well as you can do it through the public health route. So e either one of those kind of set you on that path. Um, and yeah, and there's the slide that uh, kind of shows you <laughs> shows you how to get there. But this is all built in. You don't have to worry because it's, you know, you'll all have an advisor within our school. We have great faculty and we're hiring all sorts of renowned faculty to join us. So we're excited about that. Um, kind of finally, if we, I don't know if we have any parents on tonight, but um, you as a parent of three uh, college age or just after college age, it's a great area to be in. Um, healthcare is dominating um, the job market and will continue for the next decades. Um, 
in, in, a, in, a, in a way never like before, um, the, the need is almost, I would say critical, like red flag level uh, for, for healthcare. Um, and I think a lot of it obviously driven by COVID and uh, even, but even before COVID, we, you know, we had a, a severe nursing shortage, uh, physician assistant, typically in the one or two top best jobs in, in the world. Um, so there's a lot out there, folks. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity. I think coming out of a place like PC, uh, you'll really be in good shape. Last thing, what, where will this be? What, what does this look like? Well, we'll show you when you get here, but this is an existing building. We're renovating the top floor. We have an 18 month. So basically your first year and a half will be in the Feinstein Academic Center. It'll be the temporary home while we build out the Taj Mahal of, uh, of health sciences programs. But this is an example of what it will look like. This is where first year anatomy and physiology will, will happen. And uh, it'll be uh, really a wonderful place. Um, you'll see on campus that um, a lot of the activity is in the kind of the central kind of to the left upper part. We're building out the lower part of campus, which is actually beautiful. There's wonderful greenery and, and outdoor space there. And uh, we are knocking down an existing dorm and, uh, re and putting a state of the art about a hundred, it looks like it's gonna be 125,000 square foot, five floor um, uh, program. So you'll get to see that, but this is the side of campus it will be on. This is a rendering of the new dorms that are being built down there. So this is actually gonna be right next to it. This is the new Shanley Hall, and this is going to be for sophomores. So freshman year would be in kind of the freshman dorms, but second year would you'll be in, a brand new dormitory with a brand new academic building. Like that, that's pretty unique opportunity. This is a rendering of the new building of health sciences overlooking the city. This is an outdoor, indoor, outdoor, I guess, uh, atrium up on the second second level, I think, uh, in the existing plan. So like I said, pretty stunning. A uh, couple more renderings. This is one of the integrated uh, health assessment labs. Uh, this looks like one of our nursing labs, um, probably in med surge or some one of those types of courses. And uh, on and on, state of the art, uh, will be ready and open. Uh, the plan is January 2025, which is the spring semester sophomore year for the first class. So that concludes my piece of this, folks. Again, thank you. Um, uh, Friar Town is a fun place and it's an exciting place. Um, and uh, this is gonna be something very, very special, very historic uh, here on our campus. Um, you know, we're, we're top rated in our liberal arts. I talked about that today. I think that's a take home I, I'd like you to think about. Um, I think the critical thinking skills that you'll gain having that type of background will not just a technical background. We like to say that, uh, down the fourth bullet point here is that we're producing healers, not technicians. And that's about the well-rounded student, um, body, mind, spirit. And, uh, and we want you to go out and, and treat others that way. And so this holistic approach uh, to uh, health and healthcare and really caring for others, that's what the world needs. And uh, that's what a PC grad will look like uh, coming out of our program. And we're super proud of that and excited to get you here. Um, global experience is gonna be a big part of it. I think you'll, you'll, you'll go from, from where you are today and what your experiences have been to more of a open, broader perspective uh, by having a cultural experience. So we think that's, that will be really important. Our faculty are top notch. They will continue to bring top notch people in. You'll be able to work side by side with them, uh, summer study, research, we have a lot of activity around here. And uh, so go out there and make history, become part of Friar Town, at least take a look at us. Um, it's gonna get, um, we've, we've just heard from all over the country. Um, this, this is causing waves that PC is starting this, this school. And um, we're, we're just really, really happy to be able to share this with you. And uh, again, I thank you for your interest. Uh, I'm going to bring Owen back on and I'm going to, I think, stop my share, Owen, right? Yes.
Yes, absolutely. Um, and I think there's another slide that had, did you want to say anything else about application or admission or? Sure, I think just a reminder, as I mentioned at the beginning, if you're interested in applying for the health sciences or the health policy and management program, those options are currently available on the common application, but it's not until mid-September that you'll be able to submit an application for the nursing program. So if that is your interest, our recommendation and actually our requirement is to, to hold off on submitting your common app. You can certainly begin it, but wait until we give you that go-ahead that we've added it until you actually submit it to us for consideration. And that'll be well in advance of the November 1 application deadline, which is our, our first one. And so we do have... Oh, and just to reiterate, so health sciences, health policy management, that uh, we're hitting the ground running, that, that's, that's open. <laughs> Absolutely, yep, and already receiving applications for those. Right on. Um, we do have a number of questions that have, have come in. Um, and so we have two other panelists who are, are joining us to help field these questions that I'll, I'll present. If you have questions that you're looking to have answered, certainly feel free to, to drop those in the, the Q&A. Um, and I'll start in just a moment, but before I do, if we want to have our, our two new additions introduce themselves. Sure, I'll go first because I'm already not um, not on mute. <laughs> so hi, everyone. My name is Catherine Hippolyte McManus. So I work in the Office of Strategy and Planning. And right now, my main 110% of my time is making sure the School of Nursing and Health Sciences is going to be successful. I'm focusing on strategic communications and DEI-based partnerships um, and programs. And I'm a proud PC alum as well. So this is just so, so exciting. Just listening to Dr. McGinnis talk got me really, really, really pumped. So I'm glad you're here and I will uh, turn the mic over to Dr. Levine. Good evening. Yes, that was a great presentation. Thank you, Kyle. Um, my name is Debbie Levine. I am an associate professor of health sciences here at Providence College. I am also the department chair of the new health sciences department, which will offer two bachelor's degrees, one in health policy and management, which is something that we have been doing for decades at Providence College and is a major that I'm really proud of and excited about. And the other that I'm even more excited about because it's new is our bachelor of science in health sciences. And I'm happy to talk more about that and answer your questions. And I'm happy to be here this evening. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, so we do have a, a number of questions that I'm going to try and kind of consolidate. Um, and I think the, the first one is asking if the School of Nursing and Health Sciences includes pre-med and pre-health advising. Can I take that one? You got it, Deb. Yeah, so I noticed that um, Mark Rubio asked that question and a couple of other folks asked that question during the presentation. I wanna let you know that at Providence College, we have a team-based approach to advising on the admission side, as well as once you get here. So there are going to be a lot of different answers for the question of what should I major in? And you're not alone to make that decision. There are a lot of resources to help you. Now, in general, some pre-MD students, folks who know that regular medical school and an MD degree is their absolute one plan, most of those folks will choose to major in biology or in chemistry, just like they do now. But there are actually 32 other allied healthcare provider professions. Dr. McKinnis mentioned many of them. Physician assistant, physical therapist, occupational therapist, maybe you want to go to graduate school in nursing or become a nurse practitioner. Um, for those students, health sciences, which is an interdisciplinary health science degree with an applied approach to human health is the is a great major for these students and some students who graduate with health sciences majors will probably go on to medical school that would be my expectation um, but most of them will be headed for those other allied health professions mm -hmm. excellent you thank you so much that, Kyle great um, there's a few questions about admission requirements, and so I'll share kind of collapsing them all into one. Um, some individuals are asking how many students we anticipate in our first classes, um, and that is 50 students in the nursing majors, as well as 50 students in the health sciences major, um, and it is a direct admit program. We have limited details that we can share at this moment until we receive the final approval regarding actual admission criteria, um, but it is a direct admit program. 50 students on each side of, direct admit for nursing, excuse me, um, 50 students uh, for each of those programs. And as soon as the middle of September um, hits, we will share additional details um, 
on those, those items. Um, there's a few questions that are kind of talking about moving around the college and different academic programs. One is asking about how easy it is to switch from a major that the college has maybe had before, computer science, physics, into the health sciences. Will that be an option? And then also if there would be the possibility of minoring in health sciences. Mm -hmm. I can answer can. those. Yeah, I can answer those questions. So the first question is, at least at the start, we're not planning on offering a minor in health sciences. Health sciences is going to be a major. If you're a student in nursing, um, like Ruby, who asked the question, if you're a student in nursing, um, we would encourage you, if you have time in your schedule to do a minor, we would encourage you to do it outside the School of Nursing and Health Sciences and to explore one of our many other um, arts and sciences. We have an amazing business and innovation minor that I think would be really useful for anyone interested in a healthcare profession. So we are not offering a health sciences minor or a health policy and management minor, at least at the outset. We, are, I, we envision these as major uh, air fields of study where you really get both breadth and depth. And we're hoping that we left enough room in the schedule that many of you would be able to do minors elsewhere around the college. And again, we have a team-based advising system so we can help you figure out what that minor should be. The other one is about internal transfers. And my understanding is that um, while nursing is direct entry and won't be able to handle internal transfers, at least in the first years, um, both health sciences and health policy and management are available. And so if you apply undeclared and you take intro to the US healthcare system with me and you think, oh, I'm gonna go and solve all these health policy messes in the United States or around the world, you are welcome to join our health policy and management major or our health sciences major um, once you're here. Just a quick anecdote to add, just hearing a department chair encouraging students to take courses outside of the department is just such a PC thing, just from my personal experience. So I was a history major with a black studies minor and was still able to take a business course intro to acting, intro to public speaking, I was really able to explore so many different areas that I've been able to bring on with me today. I still talk about my intro to public speaking class, perhaps being the best class I ever took at PC. So it's just, that's something that's so special, I think, to me about this program is yes, you're going to get this really great science education, but you're going to be able to explore all the other areas that are interesting to you. And even if they're not particularly interesting to you, you'll learn things that you never thought you would, and you'll be able to apply that throughout your, your professional and personal life in really interesting ways. So yay, yay Debbie. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Debbie, I think we're going to stick with you. We have um, two questions actually about the health policy and management program. One of them is asking what are potential career paths in that program compared to the health sciences major? And there's another question about how we've kind of had this program for a while. Could you share a bit about what the existing faculty members in that program have focused on in their research? Sure, absolutely. So we are in health policy and management. We have been offering an interdisciplinary major in healthcare. Um, the difference between health policy and management and health sciences is that health sciences is going to give you the opportunity to do laboratory research and bench research and community research in anatomy and physiology and all kinds of areas. So what we're doing is we're building in more of the traditional STEM fields into this interdisciplinary approach to health. It's a great option. Health sciences is a great option for folks who know they want to go to graduate school in physical therapy, occupational therapy, all of these fields, and they want to get some of those prerequisites done as they progress through this great major. Health policy and management begins with intro to the US healthcare system. That is an interdisciplinary approach where we study the US healthcare system from as many angles as possible. We take a comparative approach. We look at the history of the US healthcare system. And then we look at the business of healthcare and sort of the insurance system, managed care, how we pay for care in the United States. And then finally that we end that course looking at the problems that are posed um, by gaps in our healthcare system. So it used to be I had to do a lot of work to convince students that there were some problematic gaps in the US healthcare system, but the last few years, I don't have to spend time talking about that anymore. People sort of know about that part. But uh, the reason I mention this is because that's actually a good introduction to the entire health policy and management minor. I mean, major. The health policy management major has 10 required courses. Everyone starts with intro, which is taught by either me or my colleague, Tuba Agartan. And then they take 
Epidemiology, which is a public health research methods course. They take health law, which is taught by an alum of our program who's a practicing lawyer in health law. They take health finance, which this fall is being taught by a associate vice president at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Rhode Island, who's coming in one night a week for us to teach our financial course. Um, they, they take a policy analysis course. There's a number of other courses associated with the various parts of the healthcare system. And then senior year, every health policy and management student does an internship placement where they're getting at least 120 hours of supervised work in an area of their interest. And they do a senior capstone course, which is um, the whole class comes together. There's like about 80 of us in the room. Uh, and then we break off into 20 person seminar groups and we try to solve some big healthcare problems together. So our students work in, uh, some of our students work in uh, the business side of healthcare. They're interested in working in pharmaceuticals, in insurance, um, in pharmacy. Some are interested in hospital management and they go and work for many of the hospitals. Uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York hires a number of our students every year in patient experience, as well as Boston Children's Hospital um, also hires a group every year. Um, and then we also have students that are interested in going to work for think tanks. They're going to Washington, D.C., they're going to work in government, they're working in uh, departments of public health. They want to sort of solve healthcare problems from the government side of things, from the public perspective. And those are just some of the places our students work. If you check out our health policy and management um, and health sciences website at Providence College, which I know will be linked um, here, you can see uh, some more examples. Debbie, that that was great. And I just want to add two quick things for health sciences, too. I was meeting Owen with your team in missions this week, and I gave an example of a student. I think she was a student athlete, actually, volleyball player, and uh, really interested in sports and athletics and uh, um, got her health sciences degree and then went to work for Reebok in Boston. She's now an executive on at Reebok. So lots of different areas. I think about nutrition and I think about uh, wellness and sustainability. And those are all areas too, because they're science-based. Mm -hmm. This, this, I think the science-based is your health science, right? Doesn't mean you're going right to all of, or one of the allied health. You certainly can do that. But even because you have that science, you're able to, to apply that into areas like nutrition and, and sport and all sorts of things. So I think, Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's especially it's especially appealing for students that have interest in clinical careers. Yeah. Um, but I also would completely agree with you. And so I have talked this summer to students interested in health sciences um, who studied health sciences at another institution. And now they work for electronic health records companies mm -hmm. and they help install new systems in hospitals around the country. That's another kind of example. So there, the healthcare sector has a lot of opportunities. Um, most of which I had no idea about when I was in high school. And so part of what both of these majors will do will help you understand the landscape. Um, Debbie, just because of time, but I know, uh, Owen, there was a part B to that about the faculty. Um, one, I, I, it'll take you too long to talk about this faculty that we have, um, but I think that what Jessica is doing in Puerto Rico is a great example Then maybe one other quick example. Sure. So um, one of my colleagues is Dr. Jessica Mulligan. Um, she recently won an NSF grant. It's a big national science foundation grant to take students to do research on healthcare resiliency and disasters. And she took a group of students to Puerto Rico. They're writing a book together, um, as well as they've published many articles together, um, where they are studying how healthcare systems, particularly the hospitals in Puerto Rico, responded to Hurricane Maria. Um, and now, of course, um, they were there when COVID was happening. So they have also incorporated um, pandemic and uh, disease into their project. So uh, Jessica Mulligan is a great example of someone who's a Providence College professor who's including students in really, really important research. Um, my other example would be um, Dr. Candy Wakasi. Um, he is in his third year here at Providence College, and he is doing research on cancer survivorship and particularly in the area of aging cancer survivors. So he has a group of students working in his lab this summer. Um, they have traveled all over Rhode Island, Massachusetts, part of Connecticut, uh, interviewing um, cancer survivors, um, also um, doing uh, 
uh, survey research and other kinds of, of research into the sort of supports that um, cancer survivors need to live healthy and well after um, they're completed their cancer patients. So that's just two examples. There are seven of us uh, in the faculty right now, and I could tell you all about them, um, but I'll just stick with those two. Thank you so much. Um, switching back to, to nursing, there's been a few questions about the accreditation process for a new nursing program, and even one maybe just expressing whether a student should be concerned um, about that as they're, they're entering what's a new program. Thank you. Um, yeah, I was anticipating this because I got this question when I started nursing at Merrimack. <laughs> um, you know, every, every new program will go through accreditation. Every existing program goes through accreditation. So uh, it's just, where are you in the cycle? Um, every single program is at one point of the cycle of accreditation. For a new program, you go for accreditation when you graduate your first class. So um, everyone up to that point as they graduate is also a grandfather clause, but we will... Um, then be eligible for uh, program accreditation. We have initial accreditation. We would be eligible for uh, uh, the full accreditation upon graduating our first class. So we're just, that's the way the system works. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, I think from a confidence standpoint, you know, I was, I was saying to a, a group the other day, it's really no different than the standards that every program has to maintain, whether you're new or existing, um, your accreditation status is, is a constant thing. It's not one and done. And so this is just where we are in the process, like many programs and uh, existing programs are basically under the same thing. Perfect. Um, and on a similar note, as far as kind of credentialing goes and accreditation, is a nursing degree nationally accepted? Uh, this student says, I'm from Colorado and I'm not sure, but don't necessarily want to stay in Rhode Island after I graduate. Yeah, you might change your mind once you're here, but <laughs> I do love Colorado too. So yes, you, uh, you are eligible for accreditation through all every state. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, there are a few questions just about the, the core curriculum and whether students will be taking the same core as um, kind of has been known at, at Providence for a, a while. And so I will just kind of briefly put up a slide um, that shows the core curriculum that is standard for all students at Providence College. Um, and so the answer is yes. Some students were either, even asking like, am I still going to be taking CIV if I'm a nursing yeah. major? And the answer to that is, is absolutely yes. You will have some of the requirements and proficiencies. Kyle gave some examples of some courses that may fulfill those things as well. Um, but the, the college's traditional liberal arts core will certainly be um, an expectation of, of all nursing, health science, and health policy and management majors. I don't know if you have anything else to, to add on that. I, oh, and I would just add our quote that we love. You're, you're a PC student first in a, a nursing health sciences or business or psychology second. So all of our students are PC students first, and this is essential to uh, your, your PC experience. Excellent. And I think that actually leads into another question we had, um, which is a little bit admission related, but wondering if nursing and health sciences students can be a part of the honors program at Providence. Um, and for those who aren't familiar, the honors program impacts the, the liberal arts coursework that you're going to do. You may have one, maybe two majors or courses in your major that are at the honors level, but it's really the core that you're taking. And we certainly plan on extending the invitation to join the honors program to students in these, these new programs. Mm -hmm. All right, um, some more questions. Um, there are a few questions regarding um, kind of health sciences and more specifically, which I think you mentioned, Debbie, but if you could maybe just confirm um, that that is a program um, that prepares students for the human side. Um, it looks as though there's a few students in our webinar who are interested in veterinary school, and that would not be an appropriate option for them. Is that correct? I think it would probably, I've advised several students um, who are interested in veterinary school over the years, and uh, most grad schools for veterinarians require zoology and lab, for example. Um, we won't be offering those in the School of Nursing and Health Sciences. So 
Um, while we would love to have pre-vet students as, um, you know, students who take some elective, students who come and check us out, my, my strong suspicion is that pre-vet students will be better served in like a chemistry major, actually, because there's quite a bit of chemistry um, in the veterinary uh, requirements. That said, um, as I mentioned, we have a team-based advising system at Providence College and, and sort of the whole institution is committed to getting you where you want to go afterwards. Um, and so that would be something to have conversations about. Excellent. Some questions on construction. Um, if you would mind just kind of sharing again when these two new facilities will be completed um, and available for, for students on the webinar to come and see in person. Wonderful. Yeah, so I just came from a meeting a couple hours ago with our architectural firm. And so the basically we're calling it swing space. So our swing space is 18 months. That actually is under construction right now. And the goal is February 1. That is open for tours and demonstrations. It will have SimLab, the virtual anatomy will be there. We're actually ordering all that equipment now. So we're retrofitting the fourth floor of Feinstein as we speak. And the goal is when you uh, come back uh, for in the spring term, we have all sorts of admissions events that Owen will be able to tell you about, or private tours, whatever, um, right after the holidays, kind of into the late January, February 1 is our um, target and that everything is on is uh, on pace for that to happen. So fall of 23 is freshman year, your first semester. So fall and spring of first year will be in the new, in the 18 month space. The next year, uh, fall of sophomore year, also there. And then spring semester 2025, the grand opening of the new building. And along the way, as you're exploring PC, um, all of the final, um, what we call, uh, well, the drawings basically, but all of the planning, all of that will be uh, embedded into the swing space. So you'll get to see it. You'll have, you know, we'll have all the models and, You'll see all of that space. You could see where it's going to be. All of that will be in place uh, come this January slash February. Might I just add that if you do get a chance to visit campus, which I really, really hope you do, the science complex that we have was de designed and re renovated and is currently going through a renovation with the same architect who's going to be working on all of our buildings. Their work is so stunning. It's so smart. It's sustainable. It, it will blow you away. So I, although we're all eagerly waiting for the spaces to come. The facilities that we have right now on campus are outstanding. When I was a, a, a student, I thought campus was really pretty and yes, it was, but it does not hold a candle to the facilities that we have today. They're just outstanding. Absolutely. Question about kind of flexibility within a curriculum. And, and this student says they were originally thinking about PC for biology and theater as a double major, but they may now want to go health sciences and theater. Do you see space within the curriculum of the new programs to allow for, for double majors? Yes. We designed the programs specifically to allow students to do a double major, uh, the, the health sciences, bachelors of science, as well as the health policy and management. You will be able to do a double major in those programs. You will be able to go abroad in those programs. We'll be offering in semester as well as summer study abroad programs that are related to those areas of study. We already offer several, we're adding some more. Um, so we designed the health sciences degree as well as the health policy and management degree to really let you do as much as possible. Um, there's a question also about like prerequisites for very specific health questions. Could I answer that? Owen, while I'm at it. Um, yeah, so I would just, cool. just want to say, you know, we designed the health sciences curriculum so that you would have access to the main prerequisites for most of the allied health uh, things like anatomy and physiology, um, anatomy, physiology, uh, microbiology for the health professions. Um, there's a number of other biology and health and disease, but we also have room for electives. So if you are 
excuse me, sorry about that. So we also have room for electives. So if you're, for example, interested in a physician assistant program and some PA programs require genetics and others don't, mm -hmm. you're gonna have an advisor uh, who helps you plot out what you're going to need to apply to grad school and will help you get into those classes. So genetics is not part of the health sciences major. You can complete health sciences without doing that. But if you're interested in a career that requires genetics, we are going to make sure you get it and and that um, you you know that you need it and we, and we figure that out. So because the the career paths are so varied, um, there are some of those prerequisites for the professional programs that you'll just get automatically in the health sciences major, and there are others that will schedule in depending on your interests. Excellent, thank you. Um... All right, I believe we have answered majority of the questions um, and thank you to to everyone for submitting them. Uh, there are a couple just kind of quick ones um, if we want to do a rapid fire to close it out. What year are nursing students sent to hospitals for clinicals? Uh, sophomore. Sophomore year. All yeah. right. But their first and nursing class is freshman year. We don't want to wait. We want them. We have an intro to professional nursing freshman year, but clinicals sophomore. Perfect. Are there any um, arrangements or expectations of having nursing majors housed together in residence halls? No, <laughs> I think is the answer right now. And I will say no. And one of the things that we want is we want you to have a unique PC experience. We want you to be hanging out with people from all different majors. If you decide to self-select through the housing process your sophomore year and you want to get together, um, that's great. And we would encourage you to do that. But freshman year, no plans. Perfect. Um, if there, Kyle, you had mentioned towards the end of your comments about potential graduate programs. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if those were to come into formation by the time I'm finishing at PC, would I be able to, to join them? Absolutely. It, the, the, our, we're, our focus is going to be on the plus one, plus two, meaning a kind of a double experience, an undergrad to grad experience right at PC. What we find is that I haven't been here th that long, but I do know that our students don't really want to leave here. <laughs> and so a lot of uh, a lot of that uh, experience will carry right over into a platform of a higher level grad experience. So we're working on that right now. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, thank you to all the students who submitted these these great questions. Seeing the things that you've asked has me even more excited to to kind of hit the road. If I may set a kind of timeline for all of our students about where we go from here. In the next kind of two months, the Office of Admission will be visiting about 1,200 different high schools, and we look forward to to talking with you even more in depth about these these new offerings at the college. It's also around the middle of September that we hope to have our final approval on the nursing program. And at that point, you can submit applications as you already can for the health sciences and the health policy and management program. And then keep an eye out. In late November, we will be offering several different shadowing days um, where you can pair up with current PC students, sit in on classes that will be close to the ones that will be part of your curriculum, hear from those individuals who will be teaching you and leading the formation of the new school, and certainly get a, a taste of what the Providence experience is. Um, most of all, thank you for joining us this evening. Any closing words from any of our panelists? Go Friars. Let's go. <laughs> well said. Say much more than that. Well, thanks so much. Please reach out to the Office of Admission should you have any questions, and have a great evening. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks for coming.